Did and and not everyone's voices, necessarily. These, these voices, did they ever talk in a strange language to you? N not a language that wasn't understood, no. Okay. No, uh, not to say that that can't happen. I mean, everybody's experience is different. But in my own personal experiences, I, it's always been understandable and very clear as to what was to be done or what was to be said to infiltrate what, my thoughts. Right. Uh, what what kind of things did he ask you to do? Um, when I was younger, when the things would happen with my uh, when the incestual um, sexual abuse was going on, they they would give me that impulse and tell me to go do these things to as close member of my family and uh, I at, at times I was not the uh, person seeking it it was someone coming to me and other times I would be told to go and seek it out and I and I would and then I wouldn't understand what what was going on I wouldn't understand why I was hearing these things or why I it would overcome me to where I could not stop what I was doing yeah. I couldn't stop it no matter how hard I tried but, I mean, at that time, I didn't know God the way I know God now. Now I know how to stop it and how to, you know, put up that bar and not allow those things to infiltrate my everyday life, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, continuing on from from there, um, it, it just went on to very heavy drug abuse and use, and uh, I just got really lost. I went in and out of drug rehabs, dropped in and out of school, um, held a job and lost it. It just continued. I mean... It just continued to go on and on. Um, about a year and a half after my father committed suicide, I was taken to an abandoned apartment, and I was raped. And um, that was really a terrifying and awful experience for me. Now, before that, I had already been sexually active and somewhat promiscuous, but not to an extreme extent. But at that time, it was not wanted. I screamed no. And... That person took something from me. At that time, I felt I could never get back. I really felt a piece of my soul leave with that person. Mm -hmm. After that happened, um, I was taken to the emergency room, and they did the whole nine, the kit and all that, and the caboodle. And um, they went after this guy because I had his phone number, his license plate, all of that stuff. And come to find out, he was from Jamaica. And everything that he owned was under a different name. He lived under a different name, credit cards under a different name. It was all a setup. They go around the world doing this. And he got away, and he never got caught. Um, after that, I dove into sexual prom promiscuity uh, extremely. And it's funny because you would think it would have the opposite effect, but it truly doesn't. It makes you then believe that that's all that a man wants from you. It makes you believe that if you give a man that, then he'll stay with you. He loves you. For that's what a man is truly seeking. And if I can be good at having sex, well, then I can hold on to whoever I have. And I, I mean, it just got out of control. Um... It was just really, really insane, and I thank God that I'm still alive because, honestly, there's several times in my life where I should be dead, not only from the drug use, because, I mean, there were nights where I did so many drugs at one time, I, I shouldn't be alive, literally. As much drugs as I did in, in, in a time span of 24 hours, my heart should have stopped. I should have OD'd a really, really long time ago. And there's been, I mean, I could tell story after story. There's been plenty of times in my life where... My life could have gone down the tubes. I could have been arrested, thrown in jail. I mean, I could have been killed. There, I mean, it just goes on and on. But uh, Well, tell them, too, when you got the letter, I didn't know what I was writing. When I sent Which you letter? a letter that came out of a journal of a prophet, of an unknown About prophet. my last relationship? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because um, you went to well, Israel first I'm going to tell you how I got set free, because that yeah, came before yeah, yeah. that. So, then moving on um, from that... Uh, November 2006. November, we're going to kind of just jump up to November 2006. Yeah. Uh, we came out here to visit. Why were we coming to visit? Thanksgiving. Oh, it was Thanksgiving. And we were coming to visit for Thanksgiving. And uh, honestly, at that time, I didn't know to the extent of what Mosiah did as far as <laughs> um, casting out demons, as far as her walk with Christ. I knew, I mean, growing up, we, her father's a pastor, and we knew that they believed in God, but... We never really sat down and talked about God, actually, as funny as that may sound. And when I came, I had no idea the extent of demons or what was truly going on in my life or the, how strong her walk was with Christ or what she, the ministry that she had been uh, fulfilling. And uh, uh, we were just all sitting around, and I don't know how it came about, but I ended up going into her bedroom, and I just broke down and I cried. And I told her, I cannot live like this anymore. I can't, I am walking dead. I don't even want to be here. Now, and before this, I've, uh, there was a couple of attempts where I had tried to commit suicide. I literally felt with 
that's the way my father went, and that's the way I'm going to end up. And if that's the way to escape all of this pain and hurt in this awful world, then that's the way to go. And uh, I cried to her, and I told her, every day I wake up, I'm dead. I feel like a zombie walking the face of the earth, fighting this inside battle that I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Yeah. I don't know. And then uh, she grabbed my hands, and she began to pray with me. And as she began to pray, something inside of me became so angry and just mad, so mad I couldn't even express it. And it started to say things to me. It started to tell me to punch her in her mouth, that he, wh whatever it was hated her. It hated her being, her very being, the presence of her was making them scream. And she grabbed my hands, and I'm like, I, I stopped her. I said, Mosiah, this is freaking me out. I really, I don't feel safe. These things are telling me to hit whatever it is. And I didn't know at the time it was a demon. I, I want to hit you in the mouth. I, I literally had to sit on my hands, and yeah. she had to hold me down yeah. because it was that intense. And she began to speak uh, the word. She just And the more she spoke the word, the more enraged this thing inside of me became to where she had picked up a Bible, she had picked up her Bible and she was praying and speaking the word. And now even in, in, I personally would never throw a Bible. I have known of God since <laughs> I was little. And let me just tell you right now, I would never disrespect the word of God in that way. I reached over, I picked up her newly bound Bible and chucked it across the room like just chucked it it was yeah. so angry and then Mosiah continues to speak word and says throw my bible I eat the word of God I am the word of God and this thing was so angry and uh was now I'm trying to remember oh yes so she continued to pray over me as she prayed over me she began to pray in tongues and this heavy weight, I don't know how else to explain it, was lifted. I mean, it just, it wasn't anything crazy, nothing, you know, I didn't spew green stuff and my head didn't spin around, just this weight was, I literally felt 20 pounds, 100 pounds lighter, I don't know how to explain it, but I could breathe. And then it, we, everything slowed down to a still, we prayed a little bit more, and uh, Mosiah looks at me and she tells me, it's there's more, you know, this isn't finished, but we're going to break from this for this evening. And uh, when it's time, we'll come back. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm getting, you know, all upset. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Needless to say, the next day, um, she was reading something out loud um, in the bedroom with my cousin and my sister was in there about the Jezebel spirit. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm sitting there listening. And as she's talking about Jezebel, oh, I got so angry that I ran out of the room. I slammed her bedroom door, sure did. <laughs> ran outside, and I was pissed for no reason. I didn't even know why. I ended up getting in a screaming match with my mother yes. in the backyard. Yes. I mean, things went hectic within Mosiah's house. It was insane. <laughs> and then I go back in her room, and I sit down. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm so mad. And then my sister, she, Mosiah then grabbed my hands, and my cousin Tabitha, we all entered hands, and they began to pray for me, and the thing started happening again. And my sister became very upset and frightened and said, I, I, I can't do this. I, I'm freaked out. And Mosiah was like, then you need to get out because we're about to handle business. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister leaves the room. Tabitha is on the floor with her face to the floor praying in tongues. Tabitha begins to pray. And I begin to pray, and I'm just crying out to God that there has to be something more to this life. There has to be more than confusion and pain and anger and hurt and mistrust and not being able to live. There has to be more. There has to be. And I'm crying to God. And I open my eyes, and Mosiah sits before me. But it's not Mosiah. Her eyes, in front of my eyes, as God is my witness, Phil, her eyes disappeared, became glazed over, and I saw the eyes of my Holy Father. They were crystal blue clear, and you could see the clouds in them. That is the best way that I can describe it. And the Lord of all people That's looks amazing. at me. You want to know what the Lord said to me, Phil? Of course. He said, forgive me. And I looked at him, and I went to say, I forgive you like it was nothing. And the words would not come out of my mouth. And I cried and I said, I can't. And God looked at me and he said, you can do all things through Christ your Lord who strengthens you. And I began to cry and I'm trying to, I literally was trying to mouth the words and my voice would not speak the words, I forgive you. 
And I began to cry and I prayed and I said, if this is true, Father, send the Christ to me and give him the, give me the strength through him 